Hey guys, today in this video, we're going to be having a look at the differences between parent distortion and preamp distortion. Before we jump right into it, leave a like on the video, subscribe to the channel, turn on all the notifications so that you don't miss any of my videos. And without further ado, let's get into it. So to understand how this works, we need to start with the guitar signal. And that starts with your fingers. When you hit the string, the note vibrates. And that vibration is picked up by the pickups. Then that pickup transfers that signal through the cable that goes into your guitar. And through that cable can um, go into a pedal and basically that pedal does its thing and then it goes out of the pedal through the output and then into your amplifier. And from your amplifier, it hits the preamp section of the amp. So there's usually two tubes in a tube amp. The first tube amplifies that um, signal to a level that can be heard. And that second tube is responsible for all that distortion that you get. So for this video, I'm gonna be using my Fender Pro 2 Stratocaster in Miami Blue. I'm gonna be miking my Marshall VSL 40 with a Shure SM58 mic. Let's get into it. So let's get into the preamp gain. Now to control the amount of gain, there is something called a gain knob over here. I'm going to be using the clean channel. So this is how the clean sound is. I have a little bit of reverb as well. The presence and resonance controls are maxed out. And I have the volume at a decent decent amount, about four. The volume is about four, the two volumes, master and the um, preamp volume, just so that we can fully dedicate the gain that we get to the preamp section. Now over here, now for this I'm going to be turning on the crunch channel and I'm going to play the sound, see how it sounds. The gain is at 50%. to increase the gain a little bit and you'll hear that there's going to be more distortion. Now one thing you can do with this is lower the volume to get a cleaner sound. So to demonstrate this, I'm going to put the gain back at 50% and I'm going to be using this super overdrive pedal. I'm going to have the level at about here and the drive coming from this pedal is at zero and the tone is almost at about 50%. But that's for your taste. Now I'm going to play. Here's the full sound. Now, I'm going to slowly turn it down. This also goes the same for your picking dynamics too. So if you pick hardly, you'll hear a lot of distortion. But if you start picking lighter, then you'll hear that the sound cleans up. This goes the same for distortion pedals too. That's why you need to have your level really high, otherwise then you'll get a really weak sound. So here's the level really low. And here it is off. Here it is on. You can hear how it takes away all that dirt that was coming from the amp. So let's put it to 50%.
There's a lot more distortion, but it's definitely missing something. So we're gonna put it at three quarters, 75 cent. <laughs> Here it is on. If you want an extra boost, you can go past 75%. This is how it sounds. Now for some people that use a lot of pedals, using the amp's overdrive may be a problem. Because here's what happens when you put your effects in front. I'm going to show you what it sounds like clean. Now here's some delay and some chorus yet for you guys. clean sound there. However, if we turn on the crunch channel with all that gain, you'll hear the, all the difference. Now what you heard there is the effects getting distorted by that dirty amplifier. That may be what you want, but that may not be what you want. You might want your effects to stand out a lot more than it distorting. So there is something called the effects loop in your amplifier. And that is responsible for taking that signal and going into the power amp section. Now there's a space in between the power amp section and the preamp section which is called the effects loop. And that's where your delay pedals, your chorus pedals, your reverbs can go in. And that would solve the problem of it distorting. So now I have hooked up those two effects to the effects loop of my amplifier. Now let's hear how that sounds. This is how, it, this is how the um, clean sound is like. Turn on the effects. Now let's turn on the crunch. Let's see how that sounds. You can hear how the effects are much clearer in the effects loop and so the distortion doesn't distort those effects anymore which is a good thing. Maybe good for some people. I personally like effects in the effects loop. It makes my effects sound a lot clearer and that's what I like. Alright, let's move on to the next stage which is the power amp stage. So now let's demonstrate the power amp section in the amp. Right after the preamp section. Now the power amp section is responsible for amplifying your sound even more to a level that can be heard by people and a level that can be transferred to the speakers. That's pretty much all there is to it. However, if you turn up the volume, you'll start to get some distortion happening from those tubes too. Because they are tubes and are based around volume, they can distort at a point but you just need to play really loudly, which is why I'm playing on the 20 watt mode instead of the 40 watt mode, just to save my ears a little bit. Lower wattage amps are a lot easier to get the power tubes to distort, if that's what you want, because the point that it starts to distort is a lot lower on lower wattage amps, 
but it's the other way around for higher water jams. So that's why I have it on 21 mode. Here is the clean sound. <laughs> Now what I'm going to do is just turn up the two volumes here. Let's see how it sounds here at about 6 to 7 o'clock. That is all coming from the power amp tubes. You could hear how when I turned it up, the top end harmonic started coming out. That top end crackle, that kind of cuts through your ears a little bit, that kind of distortion started coming out. Now let's see what happens if we reduce the volume even more. Let's see how that sounds. <laughs> See what happens if we have it all the way. Let's see how that sounds. tubes and it's significantly louder too. Now the same goes for this as well. The tubes can also clean up as well if you have it at a certain level. So if we have the volume all the way, this is how it sounds. You can hear how there's a lot of distortion. Now let's turn to five. Let's see how that sounds. It was pretty clean, but you could still feel that that hair was still there. So let's turn it down even more. Let's not forget about picking lighter as well. That also helps with cleaning up the sound. The same actually goes for overdrive pedals too. If you boost the volume pretty high and have the power tube level really high, then you can start to boost it too as well. So here it is, we got the distortion pedal. Here it is with the distortion pedal at 25%. You can hear know how it cleaned up a lot in this level. So let's put it to 50%. It's a little more dirtier, but it's not to that level. So let's increase it to 75%. Now I say that's about the right level there. So let's put it to max, and you'll start to get more of a boost here.
to the sound. Now, that top end harmonic distortion, some people may not like that, which is why you can blend the preamp gain and the power amp gain with each other. Let me show you how that could work. So for this, I'm going to lower the volume a little bit and put it on the dirty channel, the crunch channel. After using this amp for a while, I know that over here is the point where it breaks up. I like to have the master all the way and just control the overall level from here. The power amp distortion and the preamp distortion are distorted nicely. This is how this sounds. <laughs> distortion, the preamp distortion, you get a pretty big sound and that's really cool. I like that a lot. I think you should use that too. Now if you want to use effects with the power amp distortion, unfortunately there's not a very good way to do that, but there is a solution to that. Now let's try using effects with the power amp distortion. Now if you want to use effects with the power amp distortion, here's how it sounds. This is the clean channel. This is the clean sound. Now let's turn up the volume. In front of the amp, this is how it sounds. The effects. You could hear that the same thing was happening with putting the effects in front of the amp with the preamp distortion too. Let's see how putting it in the effects loop would sound. This is how it sounds in the effects loop. It should sound the same. This is how it sounds with the effect. didn't sound very different from when it was in the front of the amp so there's really no way to solve the um, effects getting distorted from the power amp distortion. What you can do on your amp is set something called the edge of breakup sound. But you can't really hear the crackle that much but you can just feel that the distortion coming from the power amps is there. Let's give that a go. So for this I've set the amp to the crunch channel and I said it's the edge of breakup zone. You'll hear more preamp gain but you'll still feel that the power amp gain is there. So here's how that sounds. This is the sound clean. Here it is how it sounds with the effects on. distorted a little bit, not to the point that you can't even hear the chorus that well and the delay just goes all over the place. I find that if you distort the effects a little bit, it stands out pretty nice in the mix. It fills out the whole sound. So that was my tutorial on how you can use power amp distortion and preamp distortion to your advantage. Now for me, I like both. I like both power amp distortion and preamp distortion. I like the top end harmonics that 
the current sound gives me and I like the very powerful distortion that comes from the preamp tubes. It's very classic, it's great sound, the preamp tubes and just a little bit of power and gain. Just a touch. You can really open up your sound. That's my video on how you can use power amp distortion and preamp distortion to your advantage. If you enjoyed the video, please give this video a like. That would be greatly appreciated. Subscribe to the channel, turn on all notifications, and I'll see you all in the next video. See you later.